Hey everyone, Mr. Campbell here. This video goes with week four in my course, Modern American History, 1865 to 2000 on, um, on American imperialism. And in this lecture, I want to talk about the foreign policy of President Teddy Roosevelt, specifically an interesting little piece of American political doctrine called the Roosevelt Corollary, which we mentioned briefly in the lecture, but which I wanted to go into a lot more depth because it's kind of fascinating. The, um, the Roosevelt Corollary is an addition to the Monroe Doctrine. It was articulated by President Theodore Roosevelt in his State of the Union Address in 1904, and the Roosevelt Corollary essentially establishes the United States of America as the police force of Latin America and the, the Caribbean. So let's get into a little background. The Monroe Doctrine goes back to 1823 and the policy of President James Monroe. And in the 1820s, what was happening in the Western Hemisphere was a lot of the remaining European colonies, especially in Latin America, were revolting against Spain and Portugal. Between 1810 and 1820, there was a whole score of revolutions throughout Latin America with these colonies throwing off uh, their old Spanish colonial masters and declaring independence. And some of these European powers, like Spain and Portugal, wanted to send their uh, military over to Latin America to try to crush these revolts and restore European colonial power to the continent. Now, pre this prompted President uh, Monroe to state that the United States considered the Western Hemisphere closed to future European colonization, and that... Uh, attempts of European powers to reconquer newly independent colonies would be taken as a sign of hostility towards the United States of America. So essentially, the Monroe Doctrine states that the Western Hemisphere is no longer an open field for European colonization as of 1823. And it warns that any attempts to colonize, form new colonies, or to reconquer old colonies in that hemisphere will be constituted as a act of aggression towards the United States of America. Now, fast forward to the age of American imperialism, which is about from the late 1890s to the, uh, the first decades of the 20th century, and the pres presidency of Teddy Roosevelt in the first decade of the 20th century. Now, uh, Teddy Roosevelt's foreign policy is famously summed up by his maxim, speak softly and carry a big stick, which, uh, which is known as big stick diplomacy. And it's basically the idea that you, you, you try to obtain your diplomatic objectives by political diplomatic means, but you always have the threat of military force backing it up. You're, you're speaking softly, but you're carrying that big stick behind you. You're ready to whack your opponent if you can't get what you want out of him peacefully. And it really is, it really is indicative of this mood of zealous uh, American expansionism that was rampant at the turn of the, the 20th century, the idea that the, the United States uh, economically, politically, territorially knew no bounds and nobody could stand in our way and we were going to knock anyone in the head who, who dared to oppose our aims of, uh, of world empire. So the Roosevelt corollary to the Monroe Doctrine comes as a result of the 1902-1903 Venezuela crisis. Venezuela, of course, is a little country in the, the very northern part of South America. And in uh, the early part of the 20th century, it had been rocked by a civil war and there was lots of civil unrest, and the government of Venezuela had incurred large debts to several European nations. Because of the, the unrest in the country, Venezuela was unable to repay its debts to Europe. And when Venezuela refused to pay, three European nations, uh, that is Great Britain, Italy, and Germany, sent their navies to blockade Venezuela. Uh, they threatened to land in Venezuela with their military and seize Venezuelan resources and assets unless Venezuela agreed to pay its debt. Now, this set off the alarms of Teddy Roosevelt, who, who was no friend of Venezuela, but 
he, on principle, disliked this idea of European powers bringing their military into the Western Hemisphere and interfering in the internal affairs of Latin America. And he almost uh, viewed it as a, <clears throat> as a violation of the Monroe Doctrine. The Monroe Doctrine said that no European power could try to reconquer its old colonies. And of course, Spain, or I'm sorry, not Spain, uh, Great Britain, Italy, and Germany were not trying to conquer Venezuela. But the fact is their military was threatening to land with boots on the ground and seize assets in payment of a debt. And Roosevelt saw this as tantamount to a conquest by European powers. And so he was very much opposed to this naval blockade and he threatened military action. He, he told uh, he told Germany, which was the most aggressive of the debtors, that the United States will go to war with you if you land, if, if you set foot on Venezuelan territory. Uh, Germany backed down. The debt payment was later negotiated by an international, uh, in, in, negotiated internationally. But Teddy Roosevelt feared that this episode would encourage further European interventions in the region. So in his State of the Union Address of 1904, he expounded his policy that has now become known as the Roosevelt Corollary to the Monroe Doctrine, which is the idea that it is the prerogative of the United States specifically to stabilize the economies of these smaller Central American and Caribbean countries uh, if they couldn't pay their debts. Um, if Europe had claims on the debts of these countries, it would be the United States job to enforce these these debts rather than Europe directly. So rather than Germany or Great Britain sending their, their naval forces to force collection of the debt from Venezuela, Roosevelt envisioned a situation where the European powers would petition the United States with their grievances and the United States would act as the enforcer. Essentially, it's going to establish the United States as the police force of the Caribbean and, uh, and Latin America. It's a very interesting idea because while Roosevelt explained it as a addition to the Monroe Doctrine, it really flips the Monroe Doctrine on its head. The Monroe Doctrine had warned Europe to keep its hands off the Americas. Teddy Roosevelt was now saying that since the U.S. would not permit Europe to put its hands on the Americas, <laughs> um, now the U.S. had an obligation to do so. So before the Monroe Doctrine just says Europe can't interfere, and now Roosevelt says, and since you can't interfere, the United States has a moral obligation to do so. <laughs> to, um, in other words, um, the U.S. is going to intervene to stop other interventions. <laughs> this is the Monroe Doctrine uh, uh, on its head. And of course, this is going to justify all sorts of interventions in the Caribbean and Central America. Just in the two decades after the Roosevelt Corollary was proclaimed, there was 14 military um, operations in Central America or the Caribbean. And of course, they weren't just for the purpose of enforcing European claims against these countries for debt purposes, but also just to protect American property or advance American diplomatic interests. Essentially, the, the Caribbean and Latin America becomes America's playground to, uh, to realize its imperialist ambitions against these countries that are all too small to do anything about it. This policy is going to go on until the administration of Franklin Roosevelt, who, who phases it out. Now, it started to get phased out under, uh, under um, Calvin Coolidge, but under Franklin Roosevelt, it switches to something called the good neighbor policy, which kind of repudiates the Roosevelt corollary. Although you have seen the Roosevelt corollary invoked several times um, in the 20th, even in the 21st century, in the times of uh, George W. Bush and even uh, President Trump, you'll occasionally hear the principles of the Roosevelt Corollary invoked when there's a disorder in Central America. Essentially, uh, instances where the United States says to Central America, if you can't keep your house in order, we will. Okay. So that's the Roosevelt Corollary for you. A uh, very interesting piece of diplomatic history.